Hey everybody, part three here. Uh, you should have tabbed it over from part two. Otherwise, go look at parts two if you're interested in what I'm doing here. Uh, so with this one here, I did use some glue to put this in uh, when I when I had done it the original time because I honestly thought I would never pull it back off, uh, which is why I've learned my lesson of never using super glue. You think you're never going to tear it apart again, and then something comes around and you say, yep, I want to tear it apart again. So... Uh, able to twist it out there just a little layer of super glue on the edges that uh, we kind of had to get banged around or get it knocked off but we're not touching this tire here we're actually touching this one here so what we're going to do is we can either pop this tire off which is what i'm thinking i'm going to do i'm going to just push the center out and keep the tire which i'm going to put on the truex car the other option is you can actually i think i can maybe push from the back Basically, you want to make sure you're getting as much pressure on the bead part of the tire or on the rim. You don't want it on the middle because that is where you can break it. So you just have to be very cautious about what you're, you know, where you're pushing on. You should be good. There should be plenty of strength in this, but I have broken a rim before by pushing on the wrong spot too hard. So just, you know, be careful, use good judgment, and you should be able to kind of pry away at the at the tire here you can see I'm getting part of it off here it's not coming very easy but it's uh, it's gonna get there and so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep pushing and then if you've ever dismounted a tire you go to a little to the side a little to the side and it's the same kind of thing just much 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 smaller and once you get to a certain point I should be able to get my little Phillips in there not quite it is darn close let me go with my flat, see if I can get my flat head in there. Just get a little pry to it. There we go. And once you get to that point, you should be able to just kind of pop the rim sideways in there. And we'll probably need to do it again before I knock my camera off here, though. So we'll just kind of keep popping the rim sideways. And again, never, never think you're going to get this done in a minute because it, you know, this is a video and it's taken me three, three stages. So the rim is out. There it is. So, we're going to want the Truex rim, and it is, I believe, still on the axle somewhere. Yep, there it is. So, that is the Jimmy Johnson, that is the tire, or the wheel, and that is Jimmy Johnson's rear end. So, also, make sure you don't get your parts mixed up, unless you're wanting to mix and match parts, which, go ahead, it, it's fun. Um, so, very next thing we're going to do is we're going to put it in kind of sideways like this, and then just kind of move it over, and this is the easiest way to mount the tire, because... Once it has the groove, slides right in, and it's on. That took, you know, a lot less time than it did to take it off. So, we now have a chewed-up tire instead of no tire to go on the Truex car. So, reassembly is exactly the same as disassembly, just in the opposite order. So, I'll assemble the Truex one. It's going to be 99% the same for the Johnson one. Um, there's going to be a couple of tiny differences, but they were also shown when taking it apart. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this tire on here. Um, I'm not even going to glue this one. It's not loose enough that I'm willing to, you know, say that it's not going to stay. I still think it's going to stay just fine. Because a lot of that movement comes from the tire. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of give it a little squeeze, give it a little turn here, give it a little turn there, just kind of get it enough pressure that it feels nice and sturdy like it's not going anywhere and if you really want it to stay on there you can dab a, t a little bit of glue on the tip of the axle before you put the wheel on but as I said i'm not too worried about it um coming back off and if it does come back off i'm not worried about how hard it is to get back on so i'm not going to want to glue it today uh doesn't mean i'll never will just not today so putting the rear axle back in we're going to put a little more height to my camera so we get a good good view of this because this can be tricky so on the back, oh, I think I just dropped two screws. Is that what I dropped? Yes, two screws went off the top. So I need these actually back. I'll put them in later. So we're just going to show this. There's the, this has a, a point on the rear end and these two are your main concern. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide this up in here. These two ends go up here in the, the front here. There we go. So they're in. Then we slide it over to the back, and that's, this is where it can get tricky. Trying to get these uh, shock pieces back in to their respective uh, casings. 
So you get one in. I generally just kind of push on one to get it into the next hole. But basically, once they're in the hole, they'll guide themselves. It's just you have to get a little bend on them. They are flexible, so don't be too afraid, but don't push too hard on them. And that'll pretty much put that in place. And we're going to push down. We're actually going to try and... There we go. So we then popped the, uh, the drive shaft here in. What I did is I pushed this up this way and up and then the drive shaft I tipped I have to tip this down so the drive shaft stays down here and then you can line it up it's got a hole it sets in and just like that we're pretty much back in place we just have to move that piece in here and our rear end is back in place however it's not secured so we still got to put the screws back in here and I think I actually just popped a part of it out so we'll have to look here yep I did I had part of the rear end fall out so it could be a little bit of a pain. Um, I did lose both of my shocks that were positioned, so I'll have to reposition those. Um, so I got those re no, I got those repositioned now, and everything is in there. So now we're gonna try and get one of these started. Now we're gonna try and get the other one started. Now the biggest thing is we're just trying to get it started so that way. Uh, the axle can stay in place because the one thing that is the hardest on this is when your axle won't stay in place and it's really hard to get it to, to line up so I got the one side lined up I'm currently working on the other side all right so I think I got them lined up enough now we can take a look back here make sure everything's in line which it's not this see how that shock is out of line so I'm going to take this side loose again, and you're just going to have to tinker with this. This is part of the the joy, I guess, of putting it back together is kind of getting nitpicky and trying to line it up. So I'm going to use a screwdriver so I can get in there a little further. Just give it a little push. Almost there, and it's back in. Now that it's back in, I want to drop that screw back in there. And I want to twist it down a little bit. I just want to get it in there, not snugged up tight or anything. I just want to get these lined up. So I want to make sure it rolls, which it does. The shocks lined up. Spring uh, won't compress yet because I haven't pushed them down yet. Or haven't, you know, tied them tied them in. But once I get the, uh, the springs in there, they, they should do that. So uh, then we'll tighten them down. So everything was lined up. It looked good. So now comes the tighten down part. As you can see, it's kind of pulling the car down. So the rear of the suspen the rear suspension is kind of getting pulled in, which is good. You want it to do that so it sits a little lower. And also uh, the suspension will actually work then because you have to get uh, the, sh the main part of the spring inside of the metal casing. Otherwise, it's just going to sit there and bounce off it. But now we got a rear suspension on both sides. This side's not as good. I'm not sure. Let me pop that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push down on that. And then I'm going to tie down that screw a little further. Just to make sure. Because the one side is very, very loose. But the other side has been a little bit of a pain. Not really sure what the deal is there. Maybe I'll loosen it and see if I can get it a little bit more. There we go. So it just needed a little bit of play to it. There we go. Perfect. So the rear end's got enough play. We're at the 10 minute mark again. So part four. This is going to be a longer one. Uh, part four will be coming up. Uh, we got most of it back together. The rest of it should be very simple. But uh, one more video should have it all back together. As I said, the Johnson one will follow a lot of the same steps. So part four, top left corner, you know the drill. And we'll see you guys in the next part.